in this video i am going to walk you through how can we set up a new snowflake account so i have been uh, getting the request that uh, you know how can we get started with snowflake and how do we access the account is it chargeable how much does it charge all of these things so i thought that let's come up with a video so that uh, uh, you all can easily uh, see and understand how we can set up a snowflake free trial account okay i am in this uh, uh, signup.snowflake.com url so just hit this url you will get this in the description also and it will redirect you to the snowflake sign up page the snowflake sign up page uh, here you just need to fill up three web forms right um, this snowflake trial account is available to you for 30 days the day you complete the sign up and activate the account since then it will count for next 30 days including working day and non working day doesn't matter uh, also in addition to the 30 days you will get 400 dollar of grades so you will have the access to this snowflake trial account uh, until you exhaust your 400 dollar credit limit or you 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 know uh, expire the 30 days of free trial account so whichever comes early you would be losing the account uh, access and then you can set up the billing details you can set up your credit card details and uh, you can continue using the same account without any loss to data or metadata okay snowflake will give you a grace time uh, till grace time you will have to fill in the billing details and to continue with this account or else it will deactivate your account and it will purge all the data so let's get started with the snowflake free trial account here you need to fill in your first name then the last name and you need to fill in your email id so this email id could be your personal email id could be your corporate email id doesn't matter so Snowflake does not uh, put the restriction that your email ID should be a work email ID. Okay, so I'm filling in my pers uh, personal email ID here. And now for company, it is not mandatory that you need to put a uh, put up your company name here uh, if you're working somewhere you can obviously use your company name but if you don't want to use your company name or you are not working yet you can put student and that should be fine okay select your country of origin and uh, if you want to get updates over an email for snowflake uh, services and products you can opt otherwise you can leave it blank then click on continue next uh, the snowflake will ask for a couple of details snowflake comes with four uh, different versions of uh, uh, its service they call it editions so it has standard edition enterprise edition business critical edition and one more is there virtual private snowflake which is not something we can create by our own in that case we will have to go through the salesperson of snowflake and uh, that's where we need to get into the engagement of uh, sales team um, when we want to get started uh, we can go ahead with enterprise because enterprise mostly has all the services all the features except some of the um, data security related features like HIPAA compliance then uh, uh, you know uh, uh, some of the private link or, or some features which you won't get in the enterprise Edison, but Enterprise Edison has almost all except two to three percent of the features that we get on the higher editions. All right. So if we don't really don't have any security-related POCs to be done, we are good to go ahead with Enterprise Edison. Next is uh, choose your service provider. So as we all know that Snowflake can be hosted on any of these three cloud service providers: AWS, GCP, or Microsoft Azure. So here we need to choose our cloud partner. So the cloud partner where our Snowflake will be hosted, right? So when we say Snowflake would be hosted, by now you must 
have an understanding that Snowflake is a software as a service and here um, all the infrastructure that the Snowflake is using is going to be the cloud service provider's infrastructure. So if we are creating a Snowflake account, the infrastructure cannot be spread across two, three cloud service providers. It will be limited to one and also it will be limited to one specific region. So if we select AWS, it is asking us to select region and it has a list of regions where Snowflake is offering its service currently. It will not have all the services that AWS is, uh, it will not have all the regions where AWS is providing its service because Snowflake is not available in all the regions yet. They look for the demand and based on that, they uh, you know, uh, operationalize its service in that area. So for us, we will be going it with uh, Mumbai region and uh, we will check this uh, checkbox for all the Snowflake self-service on-demand terms and conditions. One very important thing I would like to call out here, once you select any cloud service provider and region, you will not be able to change after the account gets created. So in such conditions, we'll have to go for the account migration. That's the only way. We cannot easily or we cannot switch the cloud service provider or region uh, for any Snowflake account. All right. So um, yeah, if you have any question that can I switch the uh, Snowflake edition? Can I downgrade or upgrade? Yeah, that could be done. You just need to contact the Snowflake support team and they will be able to help you out in this. All right. Let's click on get started. And uh, it says that you uh, your account is account setup is in progress. It takes two to three minutes and you'd be receiving an email on your email ID. Once you receive an email on email ID, you just need to click on activate your account button and that way you should be able to uh, get started with the account setup. Right. So I will pause this video and uh, uh, once I receive an email, I will then start. So here I get an email from Snowflake that uh, your first step towards uh, data driven organization is completed as I uh, have opted for the Snowflake account setup. So here is a link to activate my account. The moment I click on this link, it will redirect to the Snowflake login page, Snowflake console login page. And this is the Snowflake URL. So you can keep a note of this Snowflake URL. And if you look at this URL, EZ60624 is my account identifier. So this is the unique identifier through which my account can be identified. All right. There's something we will be using for uh, connections to Snowflake that uh, will be coming in some next videos. So let's click on this activate and uh, let's set up our first login credential. So here it is asking for username password. This username would be the administration administrative username, right? So any uh, uh, anywhere whenever we sign up, right? We uh, used to get some administrative privilege, and uh, basically this user would be the owner of Snowflake account. He will have the privilege of all the rules and uh, um, objects. So let's set up some username. Username could be any uh, thing of your choice. It could be an email ID. It could be some uh, first name or combination of first name, last name like that. So I'm going to go ahead with uh, run my username. So please make sure that whenever you are setting this credential for your uh, administrative account or the account owner, if you forget this password, you may reach out to Snowflake support team to get the password reset done. All right. So this is very critical uh, and very sensitive uh, information that you need to keep somewhere securely. Let's click on get started and it will take us to the Snowflake console. Once you are in Snowflake console, you can follow my other video series that is Snowflake uh, Know Your Snowflake Console series where I have explained all the components of Snowflake UI in detail. Alright, so I will see you in the next video with uh, uh, next topic. Till then, bye. So once you log into Snowflake account, here is the Snowflake console.
and uh, this is very easy to use smooth ui based console and uh, i have created one uh, youtube uh, video series named as uh, know your snowflake console which is split into four or five parts it will explain each and every component of this ui with some hidden tips and tricks so please follow those video series and uh, i will come up with some more interesting topic very soon thank you